Welcome to Country Outdoors Fall 2022, and this is a semi-live show, so normally no fancy interviews. This is just the office where I'm editing it from, and Mary's in Colorado right now, so I'm doing it. But we got a big week this week. We were actually in Turkey, of all places, and while we were gone, buddy Sean Stemley stepped in for us. He was able to get in the tree in Tennessee for the opening day of the Tennessee Velvet season. Uh, lucky, lucky, hate him for that. And then as soon as we get back, we pack the bags, get back on the road, Australia. Went to see our buddy Carl Goodhand at Goodhand Outback Experiences. An absolute trip of a lifetime. But first, let's get in the tree with Sean. What's going on, y'all? I'm Sean Stemley, country artist out of Nashville. Zach and Mary are in Europe doing non-country outdoors things. And I'm going to be taking over as host this time. We're here in Middle Tennessee on Velvet Deer during the the Tennessee Velvet season. We got one that's been coming out here for the past two days. And we're going to see if he takes the same patterns. Knock him down with this new Lebo right here. Stay tuned. Seven dogs in front of us for a while. They took off. It's prime time right now. If he's here, it should be about the time he comes out here in the next 20 or 30 minutes or so. So, hopefully he comes out while we can still see him and get a good shot. He was at 23 whenever he was a little bit farther out. We're gonna go try to find this arrow and some blood. I know I hit him. I know I hit him, so um, we'll see if I hit him good. That's that's the question. That's the question. Blood. This never gets old right here. Never gets old. We got a dead deer somewhere. A lot of blood. I'm in Turkey of all places and I wake up and I got a voicemail from Sean and he's saying how he just killed a big deer with his bow. And then I go to my text messages and there's no text messages. And then I go to the Instagrams, no picture. So instantly I'm thinking, I hope Sean didn't count his chickens before they hatch. Sean, what happened? So we're back out here at the spot that we killed this, this buck last night about 7.40. We came back out here later and um, found him bedded down in the ditch back there and we decided to to kind of just leave him alone and just let him let him pass in peace instead of trying to run him off in the woods and all that so we're gonna go see how far he went after he got up out of that ditch hopefully it didn't go too far Velvet. I've never killed a deer in velvet, so that's uh, this is a special thing right here. He's got great mass from off his main beams. Oh, well, I haven't killed a deer with a bow in a long time. Just the music thing keeps you busy during this time of year, so it's uh, it's always always good to get back to this stuff, man. So thanks, th thank you to all you guys for for letting me come out here and do this, man. This is this is freaking awesome. This is awesome. Sean, that's the best. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hope y'all are enjoying your trip. Sounds like a party. What time is it there? Good Lord. What? Oh, it, it is like 4 p.m. Dang, y'all are like actually on the other side of the world. That's wild. Technology. Other side of the world. We're FaceTiming right now. Isn't that crazy? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. We got to do the dirty part now, but 
Yeah, we uh, we're gonna get her done. See y'all. Four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> they fixing to eat dinner. We ain't even ate breakfast. Congratulations, Sean. I know you don't get the chance to hunt all the time, so you need to make the most of every opportunity. But getting an opportunity on the first evening, that's something we can all be jealous of. But now me and Mary are back. We're back to being the host of Country Outdoors. We're coming home. We're dropping our bags off. We're picking up our other bags. And we're heading to the airport. We're going to Australia. Zach made friends with a guy called Carl Goodhand, who's one of the most renowned uh, wood buffalo outfitters in the world. Um, and so we're going to go buffalo hunt with him, but it turns out it's at the exact same time that CMC Rocks is coming back, which is the biggest country music festival in the Southern Hemisphere. It's where I got my first start in hosting in Australia. And so we're going to go and support that and also get some bow hunting in. So it's a great kickoff to the fall. And I get to see my family, obviously, in Australia. My, my younger brother has invited us to a rugby game as soon as we land. So we're going to land and go watch some rugby. Full of anaka. Check out how much leg room we got down here in cattle class. Made it to Australia and all our baggage even made it. Even my fancy bow case. Oh, Sun-dried tomatoes got taken off me, but that's all right. Border security in Australia is no joke. Just an FYI for anyone when you're coming here, don't try and sneak anything in and don't declare it or you'll get a hefty fine. But they let me in, let's go. We had a quick layover in Sydney, Australia, which is Mary's hometown. So it's always fun to get to see her family and some of her old stomping grounds. I have been coming to this cliffside since I was a teenager. This is where I come every morning when I'm in Australia. This is where I first saw God, my favorite spot. As if we haven't flown enough, now we're getting on a plane and we're going to the Northern Territory of Australia, the top end. What do you know? Landed in Darwin. <laughs> we the are. Northern Territory, <laughs> the top end. We're in Darwin. And what are we doing? Going to meet up with my buddy Carl. Go hunting. In the morning when we wake up, we're going to be somewhere completely different. You never know where we're going to be. Link, and we'll be in another country, another state, another animal. I can tell you right now, it's a lot hotter here than it was where we left. We're I'm excited. I'm excited to get this hoodie off, see some crocs. Woke up in Darwin this morning, found this ugly son of a gun. Huh. Now I'm trying to figure out what we're doing. I don't know if anybody knows what we're doing. I have no idea to be honest, but there's a lot of stuff been put in a trailer. Looks like fun, so I'm in. We are just loading everything up. So the adventure is about to begin. Captain is gonna lead the charge on taking us out. All I know is we're going five hours out in the middle of nowhere and there might be buffalo and bintang. Everything will be good out there. Looking for Bantang buffalo, pig. Well, if we uh, if we forgot something, I don't know what we possibly could have forgot because we got a lot of stuff. Look at all the spare tires. The Northern Territory has a huge chunk of Aboriginal land called Arnhem Land, and to be able to hunt there, you have to have permission from one of the local leaders. Well, Captain is the leader of the Arju clan. His roots go back as long as time on this property. So he's gonna be our local guide showing us his grandmother's property. And Captain's grandmother's land is very remote. We drove pay road for like five hours. That turned to dirt road. That turned to two track. Then there was water with crocodiles in it. Then the road ended. And did I mention the snakes? There's a snake in the grass in my neighborhood. There's a snake in the grass. That can't be good. You can take a stick and beat it or leave it alone. Lock it in. Oh, no call. These are good. These eat venomous snakes. The problem is, though, a juvenile brown snake looks exactly like this. And people pick up a juvenile brown and they get tagged. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to assume they're all poisonous and not mess with any of them. Try to avoid all snakes. I mean, I believe you, but. I think it's best for me just not to mess with them. <laughs> Crikey, mate. Crikey! <laughs> Look at that. We rode paved roads for a while, then we hit water, almost ran over a crocodile, then we hit dirt roads, then we saw a snake. 
I don't know where we're at. Middle of nowhere. Get them off, Paul. Kids, don't play with snakes. That's dumb. Uh, we're in the middle of the bush. This is the proper bush. Proper bush. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we went as far as we could go tonight. So we've just found a spot and we're just setting up camp. So I've been to Luddy. I'm really interested to see what this looks like in the morning. I think it's going to look like Jurassic Park. Swag is a portable bed tent. I don't really know how to put it. It's just very Australian. It's a simple, easier way of camping. Um, it's pretty much just a bed that has a little canopy and you can take them anywhere and set up anywhere. So Zach and I are sleeping in a swag tonight. A double swag. So we've woken up in the middle of the bush and it's beautiful. Somewhere out back of the outback. Out back the outback. So what's what's the plan today? Oh, we got in pretty late, so we set up a makeshift camp area and um, I wanted to get a little bit further in but the road obviously hasn't been driven on for a long time so it's not suitable for vehicles so I think we'll pull down the buggy and we'll move camp till we got some permanent water there's a few springs up through this country here and they make pretty good campsites you got fresh water but you do got to be careful of crocodiles so even that clear spring water you'll be surprised what can come out of there mm. a lot of pigs obviously in this area so they got a good food source so the crocodiles eat the pigs obviously when they're crossing over Oh, it'll be one of the main staples, obviously, yeah. as, as like the big crocodiles sort of get pushed out of the high density areas because there's young fighting crocodiles and they're past breeding age and that. And they sort of like finding their way up in the wet season to these nice quiet spots. Yeah. And they'll find a deep hole up here and they'll, they'll move around, you know, as, as the season progresses and everything sort of dries out, the water, the permanent water in these areas sort of draws all the animals in the area to it, so. Yeah. We got lucky on where we set up last night. I had a very comfortable sleep. I don't know about anybody else, but sleeping in a swag on sand is pretty, pretty beautiful. Pretty excited. My bow's in one piece. Which I was kind of half expected it to be blown up and destroyed after, what, six flights? So. Do you want me to tell you what you're doing wrong? Yeah. What do you want to save it for later? No, I want it now. I want to look no, right. no, I'm going to, I'm going to keep a hold of that. So I've got an excuse why you missed. Yeah. I love when your friend and guide instills confidence in you. <laughs> you I'm buzzer. building you up. Yeah. So the falls. Build you up so high. by tearing you down. It's very. No, I'm building you up so the falls not so far. <laughs> Just spotted our first buffalo. By us, I mean captain. Got a, a billabong right here and a big buffalo on the other side of it. Two, eh? Don't want two. I've seen an emu, I've seen a wallaby, now I've seen water buffalo. Pretty good morning. <laughs> um, how many crocs do you reckon are in that that you can't see? Enough that you wouldn't make it to the other side. They're coming to say hi to Captain. <laughs> After having an encounter with some of the first water buffalo I've ever seen, we're riding along and Carl spots a big boar laying in a wallow. Now this is something I'm familiar with.
First Australian animal ever. And it's a pig. Well, Zach just got a pig. Let's go get it. Looks like it was a very good shot. I feel like I'm on Mars right now. Different. We've got a huge herd of buffalo. We had bentang. We had two pigs. And then there were some horses out there. There's all kinds of stuff going on right now. Look at these buffalo. That's my first animal ever with a bow in Australia. Just had to knock the dust off, make sure I could still shoot. Oh, that was awesome. He was laying down and there was another one next to him, but I lost track of the second one. And after I shot him, I knew he was still there somewhere, but I couldn't see him and I finally gave up. But shot this one laying in the mud. Perfect shot. Probably stinks. Check out the, the teeth. Yeah. Nice. That was cool. Good work. That was awesome. Good shot. I like Mary's new makeup now that she's in the Northern Territory. Getting back to her roots. Yeah. It's real nice. Good camo. Yep. We got our practice run out of the way. Now we're looking for bigger stuff, I guess. Although the little stuff's pretty damn fun. So. And I saw a dingo. Good thing I didn't have a baby. That concludes part one, Australia. Next week we're back with Carl and Captain and we're going after some buffaloes. <laughs> <laughs>